All right, everyone, welcome to the Mortgage Coach Tuesday 10X interview. Uh, usually on these 10X interviews, I am interviewing top producing mortgage professionals like the one and only Jeremy Forcier, because uh, I like to interview people that are that are like in the trenches, they're in the street. Uh, last week, I interviewed one of the top um, real estate agents in America, uh, Carrie Scholl. She absolutely crushed it. If you want to see and hear how a top performer is executing in this market and someone that's going to crush it in this this NAR settlement era, like what she's doing now is going to win and what she's doing in the future, she's going to gain even more market share. Um, I've got a very special guest. Uh, first time I have interviewed Ben Newman. I have been following Ben um, on Instagram for, I don't know, it seems like years. Um, I have a few of your books, Ben, so your books are incredible. Uh, I, I listened to the interview with um, Ed Milet as prep for this. Um, and guys, I'm going to give a few words on him, but I'm really going to save that for Jeremy Forcier. Most of the people in this community know J-Force, and I think having an introduction from J-Force will be, be the key. But, but what I will say is this guy is a mental conditioning coach. I couldn't have planned a better time to interview this man, you know, with what's going on in mortgage and real estate, uh, having a mental conditioning coach, like we all need that. Uh, you know, he, while he does coach business people and he does coach leaders in the mortgage industry, I mean, his, his, his main job and what got him to where he's at today is coaching professional athletes and teams at the highest level. I mean, we're talking every sport, NFL, UFC, in CAA, uh, he's coached um, players and coaches from the last six Super Bowls. Uh, by the way, Super Bowl champions. And 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 to me, when I all I needed to hear was one thing, is that he had been a mental conditioning coach for five years for Alabama. And I was like, oh, this dude is legit. Uh, you know, given who that team is. So so Ben, welcome welcome to the community, brother. Dave, I can't thank you enough for that introduction and to see your face, to see Jeremy's face. And uh, I like to see the faces. Like you said, all the reactions, I like to see the faces. I can't see everybody's faces, but I would love to feel your energy today. And it's just an, an honor to be with all of you. And thank you for having me. Yeah, no, I'm 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 great to have you. So, so Jeremy, you, you introduced me to Ben. We were at a dinner um, in Vegas after the Momentum Builders Conference. By the way, having a dinner with Jeremy is, is quite the event. Uh, it was a, it was a, an amazing event and Ben came <clears throat> over and, and met us. I mean, just a really humble, badass human being. The energy he brought was amazing. Uh, Jeremy said, Hey, you need to interview this guy for the, for the channel. So, so Jeremy, I know, you know, he's become a friend of yours. He's someone that you're coaching with, you know, why, why Ben Newman? Let's bring him into the community, brother. Awesome. Well, I couldn't be more pumped on uh, showcasing Mr. Newman here. So mm -hmm. there's three words, right, that just summed up so far, knowing him, my experience with him. Uh, I am a student of his as well. It would just be mindset, right? Execution, performance, mindset, execution, performance, mindset, execution, performance, mindset, execution, performance, like over and over and over and over again. So um, yeah, I mean, and that's what we need right now too in our industry, by the way, it's what we always need, <laughs> but especially when things go maybe uh, from a narrative standpoint, a way that we think is going to create headwinds or be harder, or we use the word adversity a lot, um, you know, mindset, is important performance and execution is critical but you're not going to do it with a great mindset so he's, he's helped me a ton in a super short period of time um i mean we've only been really working together i don't know since i called him on a christmas holiday break or new year's break or something like that so it's literally he has made me a psychopath about attacking the process about um you know standard over feelings i mean literally i wore my shirt the standard this is from ben like 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 he's just like i think about him constantly every day i mean if i wasn't married or if i was in a bad place with my wife she <laughs> might be thinking like you talk about this guy ben a lot like like you you know so but he is like one of the most incredible human beings and um, I'll never forget first time I talked to him, right? I, I just hit him up on Instagram and I thought I was going to go and do an ad funnel, which I was raising my hand for, by the way, like I was like, Hey, you know, I'd like to some more information about this program. Right. Um, and then he, 
uh, he messaged me back and I thought it was not him, of course. Right. It's, and that's fine. I was like, Oh, okay. I got a message back. That's cool. And he literally was like, do you want to talk right now? This is on a Sunday, you guys, like just after new year's, <laughs> new year's day. And I was like, sure. Still thinking I was going to call and talk to an associate, a salesperson, whatever it may be. Dude, it's freaking him on his cell phone. On a Sunday, he's like, I got 10 minutes right now. You want to talk about this? That shows you what type of person he is. He doesn't need my money. He doesn't need to coach me. He doesn't need any of that stuff. And he still took the time to get to know someone, execute, decide if it's a good fit, and have impact immediately. So um, I'm a huge, huge, huge fan, uh, obviously. Um, and he's just the most humble dude on the planet. So I'm so glad that you're here, Ben. Jeremy, I... Uh incredibly grateful uh for your words and the, the things that you're mentioning and uh you're, you're putting me up to a standard and a uh, high expectation i hope uh i hope i can reach uh, but what i would say is you know i get better having the opportunity to work with individuals like yourself you know it's an it's an iron sharpens iron opportunity it's an iron sharpens iron mentality and you and i had a lot of mutual friends and the moment I knew who you were connected with said so much about you and how you showed up in life. And even at that dinner to see your engagement with Dave and with Todd and with the team, and most importantly with Kara, that's what sealed it for me. And then when we got to do a little workout together and I got to watch you actually push and challenge yourself mentally, I said, you know, 4 is a guy that's gonna lock in and do exactly what it takes regardless of circumstance. This is my kind of guy. So it, it's an honor and pleasure to have the opportunity to work with you. Awesome. So, awesome. so Jeremy, I know you are only going to be here for a limited time, but you know, that was a great introduction for Ben, but I, you know, one of my ambitions right now, um, you know, and, and I've, I've wrote this down starting off both weeks, the past two weeks is it's, it's default aggressive time. Like yeah. you're in the mortgage business. You need to be putting love on all your real estate agents and bringing leadership to them uh, with empathetic leadership. Like some people see what's happening in the market with you know a lot of opportunity, and some are in a lot of fear. Um, could you could you just share some perspective on he, how the mortgage coach community might use this interview? Because I I know you know the kind of things Ben is going to share, but how should they use this with their realtors? Like I want them to oh, gosh, like yeah. use yeah. this interview and share it with their agents. Uh, use some of the things that Ben is going to share to help them gain market share. Like whenever mm -hmm. the times get tough and markets are like this, it's a market share market. So could you just share real quick how you think everyone listening to this is a mortgage professional should leverage this content? 100%. So Carrie Scholl's interview that you did last week is a great tee up like for Mr. Newman. Okay. Because what did she focus on? So if you guys didn't watch this interview, go watch it. It was so good, so good, so good. And I can't tell you how many times she talked about the process, the process, the process, the process. She brought it up many, many times that, you know, whether it's this NAR settlement or not, anything, it's like she focuses on the process. And then she also focuses on being a human and human connection. So it's very process, process, discipline driven. And then it was also the human side. And I, one of my favorite things that like, I mean, Ben, you have this like, so jacked in my head, I probably say it a hundred times a day, let's call it 50, if I'm being honest, 50 times a day, okay, is attack the process, attack the process. And what we get so confused on is when you said aggressive, uh, what did you say? Dis um, De uh, default aggressive. I default, pulled that Jocko. From, right. from Jocko, Jocko. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So D you said default aggressive. So problem I see in salespeople and especially people in our industry in the mortgage space is that when they maybe hear default aggressive, all they're thinking about is the result, right? That's it. They're thinking about the loan funding, the lead they get the conversion of it. Like they're thinking, they're just thinking about the result. And um, I think that's even a great place to start because I say attack the process, like I said, 50 times a day. And I say it so much that I see people in my office roll their eyes now when I when I say it. And I love that, by the way, because I always tell them when I catch them, I go, hey, you saw you roll your eyes. That's awesome. That means that you're getting the message. That means you're getting the message. Roll your eyes all you want. I love it. That means that you're actually hearing it. So I think that if we focus on 
attacking the process of how do we separate ourselves? How do we become valuable with buyers and just focus on the process of that? Then it, the results don't matter. The real results, and I don't want to take any of Ben's talk here. I feel like I'm going to say everything. Like, like is 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 this that you are better? You are more attractive. You are helping more, and you are just getting better every single day yourself so you can help more people. So I would love Ben, you you take this wherever you want, but that's where I would say people need to understand that that difference of like what attacking the process really means rather than attacking the result. If you don't mind, I, I'd love to share a story before I dive into the importance yeah. of attack the process. Please. And attack the process is really born from you know me hearing for so many years and we've all heard it, you know, trust the process, trust the process. During a period of time like this, with what you all have faced and what's now starting to knock on the door of almost 24 months, you think trusting the process is enough? Like, you got to go to work. You got to reverse engineer and say, what are the behaviors and disciplines that have caused me to have success in the past? And even though I may not close as many loans as I once did, if I don't choose to attack the process, I'm not going to close any loans. And so I may have to work a little bit harder right now but the disciplines that made me successful are the disciplines that are going to keep me successful. But lack of discipline and only trusting the process, I promise you, is not going to be enough. That's why you have to attack it. But before we really dive into that, I'd love to share a story just to paint a picture for perspective. Because I think so much of this comes down to perspective. How you all face challenge and adversity in your life often comes down to the perspective or the lens in which you view the challenge and adversity. So I remember I was in college, I was a junior in college, and Griff Hock, one of my fraternity brothers, walks into the fraternity house and he says, hey guys, I'm working for Washington Mortgage. You guys need to come down. Some of you I think would interview. And he comes up to me and he's like, Newman, man, I think you'd be great for this. Here's what we do. You come in, we've got tables full of phones and there's this energy and we're calling people and we're figuring out what their interest rates are. Essentially, in your guys' terms, what were we doing? pre-qualification sheets, right? So I'm hammering the phones. I'm cold calling for prequels. Now, a lot of people would never expect this because they hear sports, they hear business. They never would have thought that I had experience in the industry. And so all of a sudden he brings me in and he teaches me the language because I've been through so much challenge and adversity in my life. I've never been scared to face challenge. I almost tend to run at the challenge. What can I learn from this? Oftentimes, your greatest strength actually comes during your toughest times. And that's why you're seeing the individuals who have stayed in the industry, who are going to gain market share, are going to be stronger than they've ever been and end up hiring people back to their teams to have the most promising and best years they ever could have imagined in their careers. So for me, when I came in, like challenge and adversity on the phone, that's nothing. Tell me what to say. How do you want me to react? What do I need to say? What are the objections? So they teach all of it to me. I don't say any of this to impress anybody, but I loved it. I loved it. In 13 weeks, they promoted me to being the assistant branch manager. So now I'm like running the place. I mean, I would literally call people. I'm hammering the phones. Now I'm hiring people. But let me tell you about the perspective that I think about when I think about where the market is. Here's what would happen. I would call the Forcier family, 6.30 p.m. I know darn well they're sitting down at the dinner table. But if they answered the phone, I felt it was a good time to talk. Back when I was in college, so we're talking about this is 1999. You can go check the historical rate. So it's 1999. I'm talking to Jeremy. For some reason, he wants to talk to me, interruption between his steak and his green beans. And all of a sudden, 4CA says to me that his interest rate is 8.5%. And I'm like, yes, we got a great one. He's at 8.5%, right? And all of a sudden, the perspective was, that was really good then. Like, if I had you at 8.5% and I could get you 8% or I could get you 7.75, I'm like, oh, man, we got one. We're going to have a huge impact on the 4CA family. And now, because we became so accustomed to rates being in the twos, I mean, wasn't that wild? The twos, the threes. Now, when it's actually back to a rate, where there were people that were wildly successful in 1999 at Washington Mortgage. I was filling their calendars with eight and a halves. I was filling their calendars with nines and we were getting people eights and they were happy. But now because you're used to the easy way of having three cell phones, getting text messages and closing 40 loans in a month, 
And I'm just being honest because I care that much. When we get to know each other, this vein starts popping. It's passion. I'm not yelling at anybody. It's passion because I want you to remember for those of you that have been through this. I mean, Dave, how many cycles of this have you seen in your career? So it's like when you see it, how many, Dave? Well, I've been in for going on my 39th year, you know, five, what I call distinct pivots in the market and probably a few more. So you know these periods of time where you're like, Ben, you're just mentioning one of them in 1999, but there were people who were successful then. There are people who are watching this right now who have been very successful. And there are others who are watching right now saying, I'm trying to find my next breath. And what I want to encourage you to do as we dive in today is shift your perspective. I promise you, you will find your next, next breath. And if you haven't heard it lately, I you're a new friend to me. I believe in you and I'm proud of you. Why? Because you stayed. There were what, 500,000 people in the industry. I mean, now we're approaching getting down to around 100,000. I am so proud of you because of your resilience and your perseverance. You just need to hang on. You need to just win the next day and then the next day and you need to keep persevering but keep it in perspective because there were times, Jeremy, you can even jump in on this too, right? There were times eight and a half was great. You, you hoped somebody had eight and a half so that you could get them eight. And so let's remember that this is just part of a cycle that Dave just said he's seen five times. If you want to quit, you'll never know how great you can be. But if you've sustained it this far, then let's talk about attack in the process today. Let's shift that perspective. Let's dive in and let's make sure that you're capitalizing on your opportunity, even during frustration and what seems like a tough time, so that when this thing flips, you have the best year that you ever could have imagined. So everyone listen to this. I want you to write down survivor benefits. You know, guys, you know, every time there is a pivot, there is a mass exodus to the business and there are survivor benefits, you know, that, that I love know, that. Let, let's, let's face it, guys, there's 49 million families in America that have used mortgages to fund housing. It's, it's never going to change, you know, in a bad year, there's 4 million homes that sell and guys, you know, in a great year, there was like three ish million homes that, that sold. So let's just say 5 million homes are going to sell every year. 49 million people in America have mortgages. There's over a trillion dollars in non-strategic debt in America. There's there's never been more equity in America. And, and guys, rates are going to come down. It's not a question. They're going to come down again. And you know what they're going to do? They're going to go up again. There's going to be bad weather in the mortgage industry again. And and we're we're close to some better weather. And when I think of weather in the mortgage business, it's interest rates. If rates are down, that's good way, good weather. If rates are up, there's bad weather. It's going to keep going back and forth. But, you know, Jeremy, you know, Jeremy, I know you've got to jump within 10. Why don't you just speak to that as someone who's been through a few pivots yourself in the market and where we're at in the market? Ask Ben another question, and then I'll take it from here. Well, first of all, my first takeaway was that I feel like I just shotgunned a Red Bull vodka. I mean, my gosh, you listen to him talk. I was like, man, I feel like I just took pre-workout. I'm like sitting over here moving. I'm like, I got to get up and move around a little bit. But uh, that's what he does, man. So think about what he does to me, what he just did to all of us and the gift that he gave us with that energy. That's just my first takeaway, right? Is that with that energy, you do that too. I do that too, but it's what type of energy are you bringing? I, I was writing down notes, right? I was like, what type of energy are you bringing? Like, are, that's number one takeaway for me already. Number two was, I love this. He said, if they answered the phone, I believed it was a great time to talk. If they answered the phone, how many times do we call people and we're like, oh, hey, Dave, is this, is this an okay time? Is this a good time for you? Like he was like, they answered the phone at 630. I know they're eating steak and green beans. And if they picked up the phone, I thought that was a great time to talk because I could help them. Think about those little mindset things. I don't want people to overlook that. These There's so many nuggets and just was said in like 10 minutes. It, it's you can't, you have to pay attention. Okay. You have to pay attention to what's going on here. So um, yes, adversity most adversity that we face is not adversity, period. It's just not. Like you think about the hardest things that you really have to go through in life. It, it, it's And that usually is what can define you and how you handle it. It usually never has anything to do with work. But when work becomes your identity and you just think that I am work, 
you're confused. And then it becomes really difficult to move forward and to accomplish things and to move through challenges because your just rating system is completely off. Your rating system is on this result, right? Whereas that, that shouldn't be the rating system. So, you know, I mean, those are just a few takeaways right off the top. Um, ben, wh where do you want to go in this conversation? Because, you know, you know better than anyone. I mean, you're the, you know, number one performance mindset coach, you know, around period on the earth like what what do you what where do you want to go with this and how do you think we can have an impact on people watching this i got i got a couple of friends i got a i got a couple of friends that are still ranked ahead of me but uh it, it, it is an honor to be in uh great company but you know what it, those types of recognitions and things that i've received as a result of working with individuals like you and dave who do persevere who welcome the challenge, who lean into, like before we hit record, like Dave is leaning into, okay, NARS settlement, we got to get people in the mindset that they got to attack, we got to help them see their opportunity. It's like, Dave is like leaning in. It's not like, okay, like let's kind of dance. No, no, let's lean in so that we can make people stronger. That's what makes me better. And so I, I would love to just share one more thing about perspective so that people can understand why Dave has a mindset to lean in when other people say, hey, I'm gonna wait on the sidelines and see what happens. Where most people say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna make a pivot. You know, I did really well in real estate when times were good. So I'm just gonna go play with my real estate portfolio. And if rates ever come down, I'll re-engage back into the mortgage business, right? And so essentially that's playing on the sidelines. But I'm looking at two friends here in Dave and in Jeremy who say, let's lean in because I've seen it before. So one more thing on perspective. So we can have perspective of you've either seen Dave go through it five times. I've been through it. Forcier has been through it multiple times. Or is there there's the perspective that Jeremy just alluded to of something you've probably been through in your life that makes what you're currently going through in this business not even remotely close to being in the same category of the definition of adversity. And I believe that every single one of you, you have what I call your burn. And the burn is an underlying fire that lies inside of you that actually ignites your why and purpose, that causes you to be disciplined on the days that you don't want to do it, and especially after you win. And in doing this work, and it's been a blessing, Almost 20 years I've been doing this work with some of the highest performers to ever walk the face of the earth in business and in sports. And what I've recognized, the secret to these highest performers is they understand exactly what their burn is and they connect to it every day. Not once a month, five times a month, it's every day. So let me share my adversity. My mother passed away 11 days before my eighth birthday. I wish I had more time and we could spend more time on my mother and the amazing example she was for me in my life. Parents divorced at six months old. She had a disease called amyloidosis. My mother, when we had 24-hour nursing care in the house, came to the dinner table with an IV stand every single night to ask me how my day was at school. When my mother passed away, she kept this journal where she wrote, beat the statistics, beat the odds, live with the disease that is chronic and fatal, believe in yourself, combat anything, purpose in life. And at seven years old, my mother took the pen that she was writing with in that journal and she passed it on to me. And I didn't understand it as a seven-year-old boy, the way that I can understand it and articulate it now. But these little eyes were watching my mom. And there might be little eyes that are watching you in your home right now, how you respond to what you're currently going through personally and professionally. Or maybe it's the eyes of a colleague or it's somebody that looks up to you. And you have to realize those little eyes are watching you and you're an example for somebody. And what that created in me is a burn where when I think of my feet hitting the floor this morning, I'm not wasting this day. I'm 45 years old, my mother passed at 38. Every day is a gift. I've been given seven extra years that my mother never got. And you think I'm going to waste a day or allow high interest rates to keep me from staying focused on what I can do to control, to attack? Now, here's what I know. I know that this is my story. So none of you are going to wake up and say, oh, my gosh, it's a, Ben's mom was the most amazing example. She taught him this great life lesson. It's not how long you live. It's how you choose to live your life. And even though she passed, he carries on her legacy. That's my burn. But I encourage you, who sacrificed for you? That when you think of that sacrifice, there's no more wasting days and complaining about where rates are. 
or maybe you're currently sacrificing for somebody so they can have a future and you can't waste a day. Or maybe it's just proving to yourself because you've been doubted your whole life that you're going to prove it right now in one of the toughest periods of time in the history of this industry. You're going to prove that you can be the ones that will persevere and you're going to enjoy those benefits that Dave was talking about. And so I just encourage you to make that a piece of your perspective. Wake up in the morning and just like Dave and Jeremy, lean into the perspective that you've been through worse. Lean into the sacrifice. Lean into the example that you are for somebody. Or lean into the fact that maybe this is your time to finally prove how great you can be. Boom. So guys, let's give a little reaction. I absolutely love what I just heard. We are three minutes till halftime. We're playing a football game here. Uh, so three minutes to halftime, guys. Let's go into half with a lot of great notes. Jeremy called out a few. But I, but I know where I want to take this interview. You know, I have interviewed hundreds of the best, most successful mortgage and real estate professionals in America. This Thursday, we're doing the Modern Mortgage Summit. And every single person on that stage has something in common, you know, and, and it's something that they have in common that we're going to talk about. I, uh, I'm doing a lot of interviews, can default aggressive. I, I actually created a playlist called the NAR Settlement Playlist. Uh, I've interviewed the number one realtor in America, Jason Mitchell. That thing's gone viral, 26,000 views. We haven't even promoted it. Six days old. I interviewed Sean Herrero. You know, how is Sean Herrero going to turn the NAR settlement into an opportunity? You know, Carrie Scholl, you know, how is she going to win in real estate post the NAR settlement? Just a few hours, an hour ago, we, we released the number one loan officer in America, Shop Benoshian. You know, and you, and you know what they all have in common, guys? They're process driven. They attack the process. And you know what they, you know what? They have a kick-ass process. And they attack it consistently. There's nuances to the practice. They're all data-driven. You know, they all have databases. And they are focused on those databases. They are driving consistent processes on those databases. So that, you know, if Amazon got in the mortgage business or the real estate business, because they have relationships, because they have databases, because they have local referral-based process, they're killing it. So... So I really want to dedicate the second half of this call and inspire both mortgage and real estate professionals to attack the process. You know, one last comment, and then Jeremy, if you have something you want to add before we kind of throw the question to Ben, you know, all these mortgage professionals, they have these processes and they win. Every top listing agent in America has processes. Like they have to get a contract signed, listing agreement. They negotiate not only their compensation, but the buyer's agent compensation. And in order to get that contract and negotiate that compensation, they've got a listing pitch. You know, they've got a presentation that they show up for a listing appointment and they have a very sequential, yeah, they tailor it. They ask questions, they tailor, they teach, they lead, but but they've got that. You know what, you know what, Jeremy, what do you think? What percent of buyer's agents in America today are getting a signed listing agreement? What's your what's your guess? Well, I know market to market is really different. In my market, no one does. And it's a huge mistake. And I've been talking like a buyer representation agreement, right? Like, like it's I it it doesn't happen. And it's so silly um, that no one has anything sign a buyer broker agreement. So in my market, it never happens. It is, it's going to now though, things are changing. Yeah. So, so guys, I heard a stat that is 2%, which I do not believe. I, I believe nationwide is less than 1%. And, and while we still need to see how this thing's going to play out and there's a, you know, by July 1st date, things are going to happen, but, but here's my prediction. I don't know when that date is actually going to be, but in the future, 100% of buyer agents are going to have an agreement. So there is a, a change in business practices in real estate that if you are process driven and you are data driven, you will gain massive market share. If you will go to agents, oh, you want to play in the future? Let me help you be part of your buyer agent presentation. Again, if you're a mortgage coach and you're delivering a total cost analysis, you, you are stepping into this game with a new advantage. But if you're not a mortgage coach, you can sign up, 
become a mortgage coach. And literally within 30 days, you can be part of, you know, those folks. But so I really want to drive that. So Jeremy, what are your thoughts on dedicating the rest of this call with Ben on attack the process and and how to go about that tactically? Like have Ben kind of teach both realtors and loan officers how to be, you know, attack the process people. Thoughts on that? Yes. Yes. My answer is yes. Like, like yes, that that, that I mean, it's very simple. I have no other <laughs> so, words. I feel like I have a front row seat here. So I'm just like listening, watching. So, so Ben, hearing that literally 99% of realtors, buyer's agents, don't have a process to negotiate comp, get an agreement. And it's a big opportunity for loan officers to be that, that mortgage coach, that data-driven mortgage coach. Give us a lesson for the next 30 minutes, like tell stories, drive strategies. Jeremy and I will jump in and add to it, but like be the mortgage industry's mentor to help us create a process oriented org um, industry. What a, what an honor to uh, give me the opportunity to look at it through, through that lens to really help and to provide tools. You know, at the end of the day, you know, I sometimes get brought into events and they say, Oh, we've got this motivational speaker. It's like, I'm not a motivational speaker. I am a coach. And so if we can't drive long-term growth and sustainability from our time together, then we laughed, we cried, we got excited, but what did we really do in this hour today? And I appreciate every single individual taking your time to spend time with us. And those of you that, that when this goes viral and there's hundreds of thousands of views that people are going to look and say, wow, Dave and Jeremy and Ben, they shared tools for me to think about this differently. And I, I firmly believe that that burn is the one piece. Like you got to connect to that burn every single day. That should be a thumbs up. I don't know what I just did, but AI on these technology things. <laughs> so the burn is the first thing that you have to stay connected to every single day, which then leads into what's on Jeremy's t-shirt. I, I wrote a book last year called The Standard. And it really breaks down what the standard is and what the standard isn't. And what the standard really comes down to is your process. And so this is how important process is. I believe that process drives everything. We live in a world where people are holding on so tightly to their results that they forget the importance of the process or the fact that what you do today is gonna manufacture that loan that closes in 30 days or 60 days or 90 days. But if you don't do the work today, I'll promise you there's no loans closing in 30, 60 or 90 days. So the process is what manufactures your future results. If we know that to be true, then why would you allow your feelings to get in the way and keep you from living to the standard? That's a choice. So we have to choose a mindset of standard over feelings. Don't allow your feelings to dictate how you show up. You have to choose to live to the standard that's going to cause you to win one day at a time. It doesn't mean close loans every single day. It doesn't mean you get signed contracts every single day that you're going to engage in a new business relationship. It just means you do the work and the byproduct of that work is contracts and closed loans. And so it's a standard over feelings mindset. So if yesterday was tough, why are we still talking about yesterday? Let's figure out what we need to do to win today, to live to your standard today. If you're coming off the best month that you ever had and people are going, oh my gosh, Jeremy, you they call you J-Force, but man, you are a force. How did you do that? It doesn't even seem possible in this climate that we're in. How did you have your best month ever? And then he starts pumping his chest and feeling good about himself. And then Jeremy stops doing the things that he was doing because everybody's telling him how great he is. That's one of the worst ways for us to show that we're living to our feelings. I call it the seduction of success. So in our highest of times, we can't be seduced by success. We have to keep stacking days knowing that the process, attacking the process, is going to drive future results. If you're in the middle of a challenging time, let's go back and reverse engineer the period of time when you were most successful in your business. What were your daily disciplines? Those were your standards. So let's take those old standards that once worked and let's bring them to today and let's attack the process with those standards. This conversation we're having right now is what kept me at Alabama for five years. And Dave, I, I appreciate you mentioning it. And it was one of the greatest opportunities. It was like receiving a doctorate in leadership. I've been really lucky in the game of football. I, I've really only worked for primarily two college coaches. I've been brought in to do talks at teams all over the country. 
but two coaches, Chris Kleiman, who's now at Kansas State, and Nick Saban. Those are the two winningest coaches in all of college football over the last 15 years. And I'm in my 10th season with Coach Kleiman. You'll still see me running around on a sideline every Saturday this fall with Kansas State. And I was with Coach Saban for five years at Alabama. Three national championships and a Big 12 championship with Kleiman. And two national championships with Coach Saban. And my first ever conversation with Coach Saban, imagine you're with the GOAT. I'm sitting in the GOAT's office, right, one-on-one. And you're wondering, like, is this going to be one talk that I give to this team? Or, like, could I actually be a performance coach for Alabama? And I believed I could be a performance coach for Alabama. So when I share this story, it may sound like it's a story about me, but I want you to think about this story in terms of you. And what's something that if you choose to believe in it right now and you connect it back to things you've done with discipline and standards to be successful, how great your future is going to be in the mortgage business, in your relationship with realtors, as a realtor. And so that I want you to give yourself permission to attack. When Coach Saban's asking me these questions, I gave myself permission that day. I will be the performance coach for Alabama. I didn't show up in Tuscaloosa, Alabama to give one talk to that football team. I showed up in Tuscaloosa, Alabama for Nick Saban to hire me and to put me on his payroll. And he could feel that when we had a conversation about standard over feelings. And I sat in his office and said, Ben, what are we going to talk to our guys about today? And he always interviews every speaker. You find this out over time. And I told him standard over feelings. I just walked through the importance of standard over feelings with you. I did it with him. And he looked at me. And it was like the, 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 your eyes lock with the goat. And it was like he gave me his approval. And he looked at me and he said, this is what we believe at Alabama. And he said, I believe that you could have this role within the organization. And J- Jeremy, Dave, I'm thinking to myself, organization, isn't this a college football team? Like the guy treated it like he was the CEO. And sure enough, I delivered that first talk on standard over feelings. I pull out the whiteboard. Remember, I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm a coach. I got my black marker. I'm talking about standard over feelings. We're talking about process, not being seduced by success. I'm talking about you're number one in the country. You beat somebody 55 to nothing, and you crave the opportunity to show up on Sunday to break down game film to figure out how you can get better because it's about the process, not about the win. And Saban kept me on his payroll for five years. I've heard stories. I never saw it. I saw it come close. But, you know, I'd be there for I'd be at Alabama 15 times a year. And so I'd be there for training camp and things of that nature. And you'd hear all the different speakers. (laughs) There was a time I almost thought Saban was going to pull somebody off the stage. But there are old stories where Saban actually did pull people off the stage because they couldn't deliver. So the fact that I stayed there for five years, why did that happen? Because I believed in the process. And I believed in standard over feelings. And I believe if you methodically, with great detail, study and remind yourself of the period of time when you've been the best, and maybe you need to add a little bit to some of those disciplines. Maybe you got to work just a little bit harder right now to generate that pipeline again. But the key is that you lean in and you understand what the standard is, and then you choose to attack that standard. Let me give you two lessons from Coach Saban and then we can spin it back for another question or point me in a direction you'd like to you'd like to go, Dave or Jeremy. But if you were to come to a practice with me, there were two things that Coach Saban used to always say. The way you do one thing is the way you do everything. And so right now in this industry, if you're sloppy in the business, you don't have processes, how can you expect results? If right now you're sloppy in your workouts, like you love working out, but because you feel bad, about how tough your professional life is, that's when you need to work out harder because when you work out, it makes you feel confident. It releases endorphins. You feel good about yourself. And then you face adversity stronger during the day. So you have to keep doing the things that cause you to win. So the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. And then Coach Saban used to always say, and this is to to really hammer home the point of what Dave mentioned, for those of you that maybe don't have processes yet. He said... We don't do things until we get them right. We do things until we can't get them wrong. So you may identify a process that you think is the process, but you may have to tweak it for three months. You may have to tweak it for six months. It may take you a year, but continue to hammer and focus on that process until you figure out the process that's going to cause you to win. And then just repeat that process at Alabama and Kansas state. We call it stacking days and then just keep stacking days with the behaviors and disciplines 
where the byproduct will be winning at very high levels. So, so powerful. And by the way, I was going to call that out. I, the first book of yours that I, I got was Uncommon Leadership. Oh, and, thank you and, so much. And, Dave. and the, the first chapter, everybody, is about Nick Saban. Every chapter is about a great leader and someone that you've had the honor of studying or working with. Um, and it's the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. So, guys, this is a incredible, very quick read book. Uh, you know, his most recent book, The Standard, is amazing. Uh, you know, I'm not going to spend a lot of time asking how to get into the burn because you did a great interview with Ed Milat in 2021 called Find the Burn Within You. Uh, I put a link to that down below if you're watching oh, this that's YouTube awesome. channel. It's great, guys, incredible 45 minute conversation um, with Ed Milat and Ben talking about how to how to find the burn. So, so check that out. Also, audience, if you do have questions, put them down below. I'll try to get to them in the, the fourth quarter, which we're coming up on. We got three more minutes in Q3. Um, so, so one, I, I can just say personally, I love it when you bring a story from someone like Saban and, and you, you, you bring it to a business perspective. So feel free to keep telling sports stories and making metaphors for the mortgage industry. Um, but here, here, here's a question for you. So everyone listening to this, they are mortgage coaches. Like if they wouldn't be on this channel, if they weren't, you know, using our, our technology platform and our technology platform does two things. One, it helps in a, in a database predict who's most likely to need a loan and be ready for a loan. So we're, we're getting to the consumer before they even, sometimes before the consumer even knows that, Hey, I want to move up. I want to move down. And then, and then we've got a piece of technology, it's called Mortgage Coach, where we, we really give advice beyond the normal experience. Actually, when I, when, I, and when I founded Mortgage Coach, the name of the company was called Wow Tools, because mm. my big epiphany as a salesperson was when I learned that, you know what, if I just wow people at scale, like every time I meet a family, I ask them a few questions, and then I deliver advice and value. And, and, and my goal was to get them to either say, wow, and like say it out loud or say it to themselves. This guy has my best interest in mind. And this guy has extraordinary knowledge. that's going to help me make a great decision. Like that was the founding principle. So with all that said, I really want you to both inspire and give some lessons so that all the mortgage coaches on this call, they can show up with realtors and they can, they can get realtors to say, hey, you know what? I need to upgrade, you call it the standard. Like I wanna be your partner to help you update your processes, the standard, so that when you meet with a buyer, like they signed your contract, they pay you. Like right now in most markets, it's two and a half to three points of a purchase price that buyer's agents wanna make. And now they're gonna to have to get a contract and they're gonna to have to have a standard. So, so give us, you know, whether you want to tell stories, whether you want to teach tactics. No, I, you know, I, I'll tell you, I, I always love, you know, framing it in terms of a story. But uh, I, I want to share a couple of things that uh, may surprise people and then share what I believe might be one of the most powerful lessons that speaks to something that Dave mentioned about relationships at the beginning of our time together, that not just standard over feelings, attacking the process, <clears throat> breaking it down and understanding your process, right? Those are actionable takeaways. You're either gonna to choose to do it or not do it. Is I wanna give you another action step that you can start using today that will move the needle and connect you more to relationships in your life. Now, before I mention this, I do wanna say 70% of my work, believe it or not, is still in the corporate world. All of my work in this industry <coughs> started in 2006 when I was a top 1% financial advisor. I didn't do anything in sports until 2011 when my old high school basketball coach called me and said, Benny boy, these kids are underperforming. You need to come fire them up. <clears throat> and I went and I fired up my old high school basketball team. They were playing the number 10 team in the city of St. Louis. We upset them that night and I was hooked. I sat on the bench for nine years with no paycheck. <clears throat> and so I think you have to do things for the right reasons, which is so incredibly important. And then a sip of water. Get get your water. Remember, folks, if you're watching this in our YouTube channel, give it a like. 
This is something that we want you to share with realtors. And if you're watching this live, put your questions down below. Who knows? We may have time to get to those questions. And I may just be able to get this man back on the show. One last thing, guys. We are now entering the fourth quarter. Let's let's give some reactions. Let's give some love. I know how I feel about this call. Uh, give us a reaction. All right, Ben. Fourth quarter. Let's go. And so, right, I got my I got my water before the <clears throat> before the fourth quarter. And so that's how my work started in sports. But it was all corporate, which has led me to do work with Microsoft and Google and Fortune 100 financial firms. I even have a program called Coach to Coaches, where it's eight weeks teaching coaches what I've done over the last 20 years. And a lot of the influencers and coaches and people that you watch, I'm helping them behind the scenes. And I'm doing that with leaders and coaches and executives. So this is the type of work that I love. So you as a mortgage coach, this is what I love. How can we move the needle so you can think differently about your opportunity? Because to be a coach, to help influence people during times like this is so important. You never turn on the TV and watch a team play without a coach. You never see really great individuals in business not have a coach i still have two coaches i read books every day i have incredible mentors masterminds that i'm a part of and i throw those things myself but i realize that i'm not finished and one of the great lessons that i love sharing i call it unexpected intentional touches so i was brought in to do work with microsoft and I met a booster from the North Dakota State football team when I was doing work for North Dakota State. He saw me at the team hotel and he runs up and he goes, you're that guy who's running around motivating the players on the sideline. I want you to come speak to my company. I'm like, OK, what company do you work for? He says, Microsoft. He says, I went to North Dakota State. I live in Austin, Texas, but I come up here for every game. I run a seven billion dollar solutions team for Microsoft. And he said, I want you to come work with our team. And I'm like, this sounds great. <laughs> So he ends up hiring me on a one-year contract, 12 people on his team, 12 leaders that I would work with. It's a $7 billion solutions team. They manage 350 to 400 employees. The bandwidth would change during certain periods of time. And I was going to work with this team. And I started asking questions. What are the pain points? How do you feel you can better? They said, it's just so hard to manage these relationships. Well, during times when you feel it's hard to manage relationships, you got to figure out how to manage the relationships. So right now, Dave earlier mentioned relationships. It's so important right now. You need to be reaching out to everybody, answering questions, doing those things. Unexpected intentional touches is the way that you remove the excuses, remove the self-talk. And every day, whether it's one, two or three unexpected intentional touches, you reach out to people and keep the relationship going. Keep you top of mind. Keep your brand top of mind. Maybe they'll ask you a question that leads to business that never would have happened if you wouldn't have reached out, but you call them unexpectedly. And I shared this with these leaders from Microsoft. I said, imagine those of you that have a team of 40 people, you work 20 days in a month, easy math, two unexpected intentional touches a day. Now you're contacting people on your team multiple times every single month. And now there's no excuse for not being in touch and staying connected to the most important relationships. And those are the ones on your team. We get to the end of our first year together. Microsoft has what they call a health score in the industry. They take all of the different facets of how they evaluate the performance of every entity within Microsoft and they score it, they value it, and they give them what they call a health score. This $7 billion solutions team ended up having the highest health score in the entire world for Microsoft. We got together for our final session of the year. And I just wanted to know, and it's kind of crazy what Microsoft does, but they actually fired me. So you actually only get a one year contract at Microsoft. They constantly like to change. They have shift because it's, you know, in a technology company, you come up with new technology and all of a sudden you release it, then you got to get new technology. So they're always looking to constantly change the game and how they think. And he actually told me this, uh, Leif Hempstead was his name, the leader. He told me this before we started, but he goes, you're only going to get a one-year contract no matter how great you are with the team. So that's all you get. So I still joke to this day, they fired me. But I literally go into this final session. I knew that was it. And I said, what was the difference? And 10 of the 12 leaders said, unexpected intentional touches changed our culture. And I think for all of you listening, 
if you think back over the last 30 days, and I'm not calling anybody out, but I want you to be honest with yourself. Sometimes that accountability mirror, you stare yourself in the mirror. And no matter how many championship rings you see behind me, I don't measure championships. I don't measure success in rings. I don't measure success in bottom line. I don't measure success in revenue. I actually measure success in your ability one day at a time to look yourself in the mirror and say, today I gave it my very best. And if you can do that, an honest answer, David, I could never ask any more of you than that as your coach, and you could never ask any more of yourself. And so I encourage you, I'm going to ask you a question here. And you don't need to send Dave the answer. You don't need to throw it up in the notes here. You don't have to email Jeremy. You don't have to email me. This is for you. Unexpected intentional touches. How would you say you've been over the last 30 days on a scale of 1 to 10 in staying connected to the relationships that have caused you to drive revenue in the past? Because that's really what Dave told us in the beginning of the interview is you've got to stay connected to the people that you've done business with. And so this is your time to now say to yourself, have I been doing it or not doing it? Rate yourself on a scale of one to 10. And if you don't like that number, now's the time to try unexpected intentional touches for the next 30 days. Watch the opportunities that come your way. Break down what those old periods of time looked like. Create your standards. Reconnect back to your disciplines that cause you to be success. So can you imagine 30 days from now, if we were to do this again, and you connect to your burn one day at a time, you identify those standards, and one day at a time, you look yourself in the mirror and say, I gave it my very best. And then you incorporate unexpected intentional touches to re-engage with the people you've already done business with. Tell me that your pipeline won't be heavier. And you'll get back to our favorite period of time when we're in sales. I've been doing sales training for 20 years. Our favorite time in sales is when your pipeline is so big that the yeses and nos don't matter. Of course, we want to close everything, right, Dave? But when the pipeline is so big that the yeses and nos don't matter, that's when you know that you've fallen in love with the process and you've been doing the work every day. So guys, I'm going to make an edited version of that quote. And I, and I really did build my career on that. I mean, when I named the name of Mortgage Coach, Wow Tools, it was all about surpassing their expectation in an intentional way. But guys, here's here's what time it is in mortgage and real estate. You've got to do it beyond the transaction. Let's face it, you know, transactions are being commoditized. You know, it's it's I mean, used to be that you took the application. Now the consumer, they're clicking on a link, they're filling out their application. The machine is here. If you are not a local referral-based professional and you're going beyond the transaction, you're showing people, you know, hey, you're renting. You know, here's owning. And what does that mean in three years and five years? If you're not using your database and anticipating the needs of the consumer and reaching out to them, like they're not expecting you to reach out and do an annual review. They're not expecting you to reach out and say, hey, you've got a kid who just graduated from high school. You know, are you how are you planning for home ownership for your kids? You know, hey, do you know about house hacking? You know, you could buy a duplex, triplex, you could buy a three bedroom house and rent out two of the bedrooms and that could pay for college. Like you need to provide unexpected, intentional touches beyond the transaction at hand. So now I want you guys, like you all gave yourself a score. And I know a lot of you, like you do transactions really well. Like you're not still in the business if you can't close a loan on time at a good rate and keep your promises. You know, you probably are either already out of the business or you're really struggling. So, so I, if you want to gain market share and distinguish yourself going forward as a real estate agent or as a mortgage professional, be on the transaction. Like be a lender for life. Like I'm not going to do one loan for you. I'm going to do 40 years. And, and, and remember, folks, people don't get loans because they just want homes. And home ownership is part of the American dream. But the full American dream is home ownership with financial freedom. And so if you can be that loan officer, it's going to help people achieve homeownership in a sustainable way, but actually manage their mortgage, build wealth with real estate, and achieve financial freedom. Guys, that requires unexpected, intentional touches beyond the transaction to be that financial freedom lender. So Ben, we are essentially in the two-minute warning, just went off, and, and, and we're killing it. But you know how many games are won and lost in the last two minutes. Uh, so we got two minutes. 
Closing thoughts. Rock it out, bro. So, you know, the greatest life lesson, I mentioned it earlier, I learned from my mom, it's not how long you live, it's how you choose to live your life. And it's really easy to trip on things that are behind us and to listen to the self-talk and to listen to your excuses. But nothing feels better than living a life one day at a time with no regrets and doing the things that you say you're going to do, following through one choice at a time personally, professionally, and in your service to others to do the things that are going to put you in position to win. And when you do that, I just encourage you, stay in the game. Stay in the game. If you like boxing until you hear that ding, 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 ding of that final round, or if you like football, then you look up at that scoreboard and you see there's zeros left. Those zeros on your clock in the mortgage industry are going to come at the end of December. That final ding, 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 ding. Every great championship fight is 12 rounds. Isn't it interesting? A calendar year is 12 months. Right now, we're in the third round of the fight. We're in the third round of the fight. We're still in the first quarter. So don't you dare give up on yourself. Now's your opportunity. If you've gotten beaten up in this first quarter, maybe last year was more challenging than you ever could have imagined. Lean in. Take the punches that you're going to get hit with. But make sure you're throwing more punches every single day, because when you do that, at some point in time, you're going to break down the opponent, which is this mortgage industry. And as long as you know when you hear that ding, 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 or we look look up at the clock and see zeros, that you can tell those little eyes that watch how you show up in your home every day, or that colleague in the office, or most importantly, yourself, that you gave it your very best. Don't ever forget that that's how winning is done. Dave, this has been an honor and a pleasure to have this opportunity to be with you. And I look forward to the chance to do it again in the future. So guys, my, my closing thought, first of all, if you're a loan officer, share this with your realtor, rewatch this, take notes. But if you are a producing branch manager, you have the hardest job in mortgage and you have the most important job. You are not only responsible for your own success, you're responsible for your branch. Every loan officer in that branch, you are responsible for them. So use this as your next sales meeting. Hopefully, first of all, you're delivering weekly leadership. I started doing these interviews because I wanted to do the best sales meeting in the mortgage industry every Tuesday, 15 years ago. That's how I started this YouTube channel. And and Ben, thanks to you, I think we just put on the best sales meeting in the mortgage industry today. Thank you, my brother. And, and so for all you leaders out there, you know, we want to be there to help you. If you're not already a mortgage coach, <laughs> You know, go to our website, sign up. I created the the trustengine.com 10x page just as a sales leadership tool to help you guys learn the skills, learn the tactics so that you have a standard. Um, ben, that shirt, I would love to trade shirts. Like I'll send you. I'll get you one. Shirt. If you send me a standard shirt. Yeah, absolutely. I, I got you. I can't wait to see you on more stages in the mortgage industry. That's another thing, guys. If you thought this guy rocked it and you think he should be on stages in the mortgage industry, tell your leadership team. Like, this is a guy. Oh, I like I made the fireworks. This is a guy that we need to <laughs> more stages in the mortgage industry. So please show this to your management team and say, this is the guy we want at our next sales rally. Um, let's close everyone with um, liking this, whatever social channel you're on. Give some reactions. If you're in Zoom watching this live, let us know what you thought of today's call. And uh, Ben, I am looking forward to a friendship. I'm looking forward to more leadership together. Uh, thank you so much for just an hour of awesomeness. I appreciate it, brother. Now we go. We're just getting started. I appreciate now you. Now we Dave. go. Thank the you. The standard, guys. Take care, everybody.